All right, Calc, we're going to be talking about places where the derivative doesn't exist. The last test we took, you found the derivative, you plugged a number in, and you got something back, right? Well, sometimes you don't get anything back. Uh, we're going to first look at graphs. That's the easiest way to understand this lesson. And then we're going to talk about um, looking at the equation. So if you remember, one, one of the reasons that I gave you guys a ruler and had you just find it graphically was because I want you to understand that tangent line is the same as the derivative. So the first, the first case, you can just graph this, it's a V, okay? The first case where the derivative doesn't exist is when you have a point, okay? I just call it pointy. It's a sharp edge, it's another way of explaining it. So can you explain why that doesn't have a tangent line as opposed to a curve? Why would this not have a tangent line? Yes, because it comes in one direction and goes a completely different one. It's not a smooth transition, so you can't just draw a tangent line there. Okay, you can't just draw this line down here and say that's the tangent. So whenever it's pointy, it's probably the best word to use, even though it's a little childish, right? But that, that pretty much is the best way to describe a sharp edge. That's one example. So for whatever that x value is, there would be no derivative there because there would be no tangent line. Next, we have a cusp. Just looking in that picture, what do you think a cusp is? Okay, a cusp is where it goes from straight to curved. Okay, and it's again, it's not a smooth transition. It's abrupt. It's an abrupt change. So that's the second case where a derivative will not exist. That's more rare. Okay, there's only a few functions really that have cusps. The third example is when you have an endpoint, okay, or when you have a point of discontinuity. So right here, this point, okay, if you look anywhere to the left, there's nothing on the graph, right? This is a square root function. So when you have an endpoint like this, for example, square root of x at zero, there's no tangent line there because there has to be a curve before and after. So the third case is where it's discontinuous. You could also put endpoint. The third, I mean, sorry, the fourth case is a vertical tangent line. And I think we did actually cover that when we drew tangent lines. Now, why is that? What is the slope of a vertical line? Does anybody remember? That's way back in Algebra 1. Okay, first of all, the slope of a horizontal line is zero, right? What's the slope of a vertical line? Undefined, undefined yes. So if, if the tangent line has a vertical slope, that means it's an undefined slope, so that means the derivative is undefined. Okay, next we just have a, um, some, some simple rules to go over. Three functions to look, look out for. First of all is a rational function. You don't really have to write this down. It's probably easier just to listen. Just remember you can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction, right? You can't divide by zero. So that's going to influence what we do here when we're finding points of discontinuity. I'm sorry, points where the derivative doesn't exist. Obviously, if the function value doesn't exist, the derivative won't either. Second point to point out, you can't have a negative number in a square root. Why is that? It's imaginary. Perfect, perfect answer. Number three, we're talking about logs right now in pre-calc. You cannot take a log of a negative number. You cannot do it because you can't take a number and raise it to a a power and get a negative number back. Unless the base was negative, but I don't know. Yeah, just for practical purposes, you can't take the log of a negative number. <coughs> Rarely do you ever see a negative base. So those are the three rules we need to remember before going through with these. So each example we do here is going to be kind of a different kind of function. Okay, so I think this example is very, very similar to the first question you're going to see on the worksheet. It's an absolute value function. So remember those two bars mean absolute value. So let's read the directions. It says de to determine the points where the derivative does not exist. So this example covers absolute value functions. Now remember we talked about the fact that it can't be pointy. Well, an absolute value function is pointy. It's a v-shape. So we just need to, need to figure out where that x value is, where the v comes in. Okay? 
So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, this is one rule we haven't learned yet, okay? Um, taking the derivative of an absolute value. Now, first of all, we know the 3 is not going to matter, right? Because the derivative of 3 is 0, okay? So here's how you take the derivative of an absolute value function. Shh, can you keep it down, please? Um, you write the original, whoops, wrong. You write the original function, okay? So the original absolute value, then you divide by the same thing but without the absolute value bars, okay? So if it was absolute value of x plus 3, the derivative of that would be absolute value of x plus 3 over x plus 3. But you still want to multiply by the derivative of the inside, but we know the derivative of x is just 1, okay? So this is actually our derivative. So all you need to do is just plug in, so take the derivative, and then figure out where that's discontinuous. Where would, where would this be discontinuous, this derivative function? It would be at 2 because you can't have a uh, 0 in the denominator, right? So you're just going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve, and uh, you get x is not equal to 2. So this tells us where that point, that pointy place on the function would be, be right there at x equals 2. So that answers the question. This, this uh, function is not continuous at x equals 2. Now, because this is a point, we need to find the y value. It's real easy to find the y value. Just take the original x value, uh, find the x value where, it's this, uh, where the derivative doesn't exist, plug it back into the original function. The original function was 3 plus x minus 2, so it'll be 3 plus 0, so it'll be 2 comma 3. That will be your point. Okay, so I'm going to graph this actually using uh, Desmos so you can see exactly what it looks like. All right, here's our function. We can hover over that. Why does it say 3 comma 3? Did I type it in wrong? Okay, so it's 3 plus x value x minus 2. There's our point. You, you got to see where that, those two lines come in. There's no tangent line there. That's how you figure out where the derivative doesn't exist for an absolute value function.